The story of creation in Genesis versus the Big Bang. The surprising similarities. Who is right? Book of Genesis versus scientists. The age of the universe. If you are a believer, you have probably been confronted with this question. The Bible says God created the heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh. Evolutionary scientists and cosmologists, on the other hand, say the Big Bang is the primordial explosion that kick-started the universe about 14 billion years ago. Something obviously does not add up. What is the source of this discrepancy? How can multiple generations of scientists be so wrong? Or is there a mistake in the calculations as recorded in the book of Genesis? In this video, I will show you that both perspectives are probably correct. How? Well, let's get started by acknowledging one of the primary reservations of some believers with respect to the Big Bang scientific theory of creation. Most Christians strongly disagree with the age of the universe as proposed by the Big Bang theory. The age of the universe according to the prevailing scientific consensus, which is admittedly based on extensive observational evidence, including cosmic microwave background radiation and the expansion of the universe, is estimated to be approximately 13.8 billion years. On the other hand, the book of Genesis records that God created the universe and everything in it in six days. Some interpretations of the Bible calculate the age of the earth and the universe based on the genealogies and chronologies provided in the Bible to be around 6,000 to 10,000 years old. Where does this vast difference come from? For starters, I believe the use of the genealogical records in the Bible in Genesis chapter 5 to calculate the age of the universe may be a vast underestimation. It's unlikely that one could establish exact dates and times from the genealogical record, simply because that's not its intended purpose. Biblical genealogies are more concerned with establishing lineages than with defining chronological data. For example, there could be intentional gaps in the biblical genealogical lists to emphasize individuals who held particular significance in history. For instance, when the Bible records that one person begat another, it may imply that the former is merely an ancestor of the latter, not necessarily their direct parent. There may also be gaps in the names mentioned in the genealogical records, particularly for people who did not have children. It impossible to tell. Therefore, there may be less discrepancy than we realize between in the age of the universe provided by the Big Bang theory versus that referenced in Book of Genesis. The difference to me is a matter of methodology and the type of data used in the calculation. Bottom line, we can't get hung up on the difference. The form of the universe before creation. Another area of contention is the form of the universe at the beginning. Before the Big Bang, according to cosmologists, everything in the universe fit into a space smaller than an atom. This parent atom exploded and started expanding into our universe. And it has been doing so ever since. The expanding plasma, cosmologists agree, was initially void and formless. This is clearly corroborated in the biblical accounts in the book of Genesis, which reads, Now the earth was formless and empty. Genesis 1 verse 2. Think about that for a second. The writers of Genesis, without the aid of sophisticated telescopes, tools, and equipment at the hands of modern-day scientists, were able to tell at least thousands of years ago that the earth was void and formless at the beginning of creation. I do not think they could have had that information without divine revelation. Nevertheless, this represents another point of similarity between the position of the scientists and biblical accounts of creation. The Appearance of Light in the Universe The Big Bang Theory posits that the plasmatic radiation after the Big Bang present in the universe was completely dense, infinitely hot, and completely opaque. At this initial stage, there was no formation of elements because of the heat and the speed of expansion, but soon enough, subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons began to emerge. Again, this activity could fit neatly into the Bible narrative of creation in the book of Genesis. The Bible was more concerned with the display of God's power of creation 
than with the documentation of minor details of the process. We can all agree that the Book of Genesis only provide an overview of the creation process, while the Big Bang Theory provides the details. After about 400,000 years of expansion, the plasma cooled enough for gravitational forces to ensue. The presence of the forces of gravity and electromagnetism allowed the subatomic particles to pull together and begin the formation of the first atoms. This started with elements of the simplest structure, specifically hydrogen, which only has one neutron, a negative force, and one proton, a positive force. The creation of hydrogen atoms produced thick and massive amounts of hydrogen gas clouds. Eventually, as the expansion continued, the clouds started to thin out, and light-emitting photons started to escape the mass. The book of Genesis references the creation process of light from darkness as follows. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. The appearance of light-emitting photons is clearly a response to the word of God. The creation of humans. Mass produces gravity, so as the hydrogen atoms with substantial mass began to appear, it started creating gravity that is strong enough to pull the atoms together to form helium, a more complex element. Helium is essentially a fusion of two hydrogen nuclei. This is the origin of nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion results from the release of massive atomic energy, which explodes to form stars. As the explosions are happening and stars are created, a byproduct of helium atoms, also known as stardust, is created. It is this stardust that is implicated in the creation of humans. Everything in the universe is created from the stars. 99% of the human body mass is made up of six byproducts from the birth of stars, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. We are literally made of stardust. This is also referenced in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 20, all come from dust, and to dust all return. As believers, we may not need science to be faithful and receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. However, science can enrich our lives and our faith if we cultivate the right perspective. God has revealed truth to us through His Holy Word, the Bible. Yet science can help us understand aspects of that truth, which are the physical laws and principles governing our universe. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this video. Do you agree with some or all of my propositions? Or do you think science and the Bible are completely parallel on the issue of creation? Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. God bless you. Amen.